Hello, every folks, and welcome to uh, to a game that I've been absolutely adoring lately. Um, and uh, well, I just kind of wanted to share a bit of that with you. So this is Monster Sanctuary, uh, a game that's technically been out for a few years now, um, and as I understand, still gets uh, still gets updates and all that. Um, but basically, it's the answer to the uh, age-old question of what if Metroid, but also Pokemon, um, and. Every like every part of this uh, of this game just manages to take what I would expect as the fun elements for ev for both of those ideas and just kind of makes them work. Like oh yeah, you know what you want to do a Metroidvania thing, but you want to uh, you know instead of just having your normal double jump or whatever else, you want to be able to fly around. Well, I mean, why can't your bird fly you around? You know, just like add a few little uh, uh, puzzle traversal elements. In fact. The overall movement of this, before we even get into the combat mechanics and things, dude, the movement feels amazing in this. Uh, like, I've played a lot of Metroidvanias, and this is definitely one of the smoother feeling ones. So, that part, really, really liked. But, as you build up a roster of people, or not people, but, you know, monsters of various kinds, they all have different abilities that will work both in fights and for the purposes of solving puzzles. Uh, like, for example, not a whole lot of uh, reasons to have this little guy blowing bubbles on stuff, but, you know, there's little orbs that want to have bubbles on them, so that'll work for that. But sometimes there's hidden walls and things, so you get some of your heavy units to go and bust through those. Or, for example, uh, let's say uh, there's some vines or something in the way, and you have this guy just go ahead and cut them out of the way, but at the same time, you might just want to burn them instead, so you got these guys. Or maybe there's a torch, you know, that's a little bit more out of the way, and you want to have this guy just go use his lightning to go zap him, uh, zap him into existence. You know, maybe it's kind of up there a little bit. Maybe you can't see in the dark, so why not get a bat to do it for you, you know? It, like, it just feels, it feels really cool to, uh, to have that there. So, yeah, I've been really, really liking this. Um, now, let's talk about uh, kind of the fun mechanics in general here, because there's, as you can probably already tell, a good bit going on. You've got your standard, like, Metroidvania big open world kind of situation, and I do love that, uh, yeah, it is 100% just like interconnected all over the place you got a few warp points for each area but they've been kind of spread out enough that it like a, a lot of times when playing kind of more metroidvania e kind of things uh there are those moments where it's like you know you, you start getting a little bit worried that uh, uh maybe it'll get a little bit too easy on the checkpoint sometimes and yeah no definitely haven't seen that uh, here so far um the uh, it, it seems like a lot of it is built for uh, for flow there. So like for example, if you uh, if you lose units or they get damaged during fights or whatever else, uh, that you can just get right back into the uh, right right back into the fight there. They're just immediately uh, back uh, like back up to full on your team uh, as as you go on there. Uh, if you get stuck in a puzzle room like there, uh, you can just usually get yourself out. If you like if you wait long enough on the other edge, it'll uh, it'll warp you back there. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, these uh, these puzzles are more for uh, like they f the sh the uh, the puzzles here feel very like the jumping puzzles feel very shovel knight esque or not even shovel knight uh, they feel very rogue legacy esque um, like especially the uh, the falling uh, spike pit really really reminded me of that um, but yeah like you open up little shortcuts here and there depending on where you've been before you have a list of d little uh, sub quests and stuff like that from uh, different NPCs that you're following around to different places. Like, it feels very alive, and I love that. It, it just feels very, uh, well, again, alive. Already said that. Like, it, it just feels like, you know, stuff's always, uh, always happening so far. So, originally, I was thinking, like, I would give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a try, give some first impressions and all of that, and then, long story short, I ended up losing a good chunk of the weekend to it, and, <laughs> and yeah, definitely, uh, couldn't think of a better way to, uh, to spend that. So, in terms of the, uh, combat mechanics, uh, as was previously mentioned, you got your standard Pokemon logic kind of situation. You've got six units on your team, but you can carry a large roster of backups if you'd like to swap them out at some point. And every one of them has a customized perk tree. Like, for example, I, I forget if I mentioned this earlier, but like this robot guy is all stacked for just dumping shields on stuff. But as you may notice here, you can have your units take your turn in any order. Technically speaking, certain fights will follow different rules. Like, for example, if you're fighting another uh, uh, another uh, kind of trainer type uh, character here, uh, technically speaking, you get less turns on your first action uh, just to keep stuff fair. But uh, generally, the idea works like this. You see that combo meter in the top right? Well, you've got a lot of your similar Pokemon kind of stuff, but also a lot of it's been reworked in ways that, uh, well... 
that just feels a bit more fitting here. So like, for example, here we started off with, uh, right here we got uh, increased crit chance, increased crit damage. Uh, we got these ones uh, getting a better uh, better chance to dodge, and then this one's already got regen going. On top of that, they got that blue meter above them, which means that they have uh, sprouted some shields. But as we see that combo meter on the top right, um, we see that every attack that they're doing, they're going to be increasing that uh, damage multiplier. And basically, it stops it from ever getting into too many stall-out fights. Like, you can go for stall-out builds, but stuff gets more and more intense as the fight progresses. So, for example, right now, for this turn, it's only going to be a matter of uh, those damage multipliers going up a little bit. So, if, for example, we were to go for attacking with something like this, we see that this guy is weak to physical, he doesn't have any elemental direct weakness here, but we want to try and finish him off a little bit earlier. So now that we've set up a 135% damage multiplier, that's actually not very impressive, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we now can go take our, our bird here, who has been uh, previously stacked up for optimal crit, uh, crit damage so far, uh, going for a big AoE in order to try to nuke that uh, entire party. And kind of combining and synergizing all of your units as a team like this is, uh, is how you end up winning fights. And I love that the game, right from the get-go, pushes that you want to try and up, like understand these mechanics as much as possible. Because right from the word go, from the, uh, from the first uh, kind of a, a fight against your primary, I assume primary, uh, rival character there, like, it was great to see a rival character that actually thoroughly whooped my ass because I wasn't quite paying attention to how the buffs worked. I was like, you know what? It is just great to see that. And then I went back and, uh, t you know, figuring maybe it was a fluke, um, you know, I decided to go give it another shot, uh, you know, fighting the uh, sort of uh, standard NPC version of that fight. And no, it just happened again. I was like, oh, great. I'm just not understanding these mechanics right. And so I went back and, you know, experimented with a few other builds and came back. And it turned out, yeah, it was just because he was kind of dumping shields on me, more or less. So I was more or less attacking, uh, attacking nothing there. But you've got all of your standard stuff that you'd expect from a Pokemon game, like your, uh, like a daycare and stuff like that. But at the same time, you've got a lot of freedom when it comes to your units. Uh, there's no limit in terms of the moves that they can learn. So, for example, right here... Um, Sorry, I uh, kind of uh, paused there for a moment. Uh, I think that was a computer issue more than anything. So, for example, if we were to go for this guy, uh, this, this guy's the team healer here. So, in his case, uh, he's got a, a heal all that like, they, they fully bother to explain all of the mechanics, which I always love. Um, but, uh, for example, right here, we can give him a passive that'll uh, cause him to dump out a free buff for every member of the party at random, whereas at the same time, we're stacking him mostly for defense. Um, so, uh, either way, uh, every one of them's got a, uh, a perk tree here. Um, these, basically, you get one point per, uh, per level. I, I say give or take, but that's exactly what it is. Um, and then as, uh, you know, as it goes on, you get all kinds of, uh, little different options that pop up here. You've got your standard, uh, like, kind of upgrades to their basic attacks. But in, in a lot of cases, you can have them go for non-standard stuff. So, for example, like I said earlier, right here, I love the fact that this guy just uh, dumps shields on multiple occasions just to have everybody running around with hyper armor. Uh, whereas, for example, Burb9000 over here, my uh, starter bird, uh, is, the, is just entirely running along uh, uh, trying to uh, land crits as much as possible. Whereas this one is all about poison. And so, for example, right here, like this one is getting, uh, getting a self-heal every time they land manage to land a poison on somebody. Alrighty, yeah, that's... Uh... It's definitely not concerning that this computer keeps pausing anyway. Um, so in this case, they're basically self-healing every time that they're, uh, you know, that they're going and applying any uh, poison debuffs there. So either way, this uh, this tends to, uh, to expand your options uh, pretty darn quickly. Like at the very start, it seems like it's going to be direct upgrades. And then within the first hour, you're already kind of starting to see a lot of these different things uh, stacking up in interesting ways. Um, so, like, for example, this guy right here, technically speaking, he's set up as a crit, like, self-healing, uh, bleed-stacking, uh, kind of uh, AoE uh, cutter kind of unit. Whereas right here, we can see that uh, he, he's got another move that allows him to attack a guy five times, but has a chance to uh, apply this bleed debuff here, which then stacks with this one, which then also stacks with this one, which means that every time they kill something, they can take this bleed debuff and just kind of shift it around the whole enemy team there. 
either way, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on. And again, it, it seemed like it was going to be overwhelming at first. And then it seemed like uh, nothing was immediately happening at first. But man, oh man, the exp like everything started progressing at what feels like the exactly perfect rate in my eyes. So either way, definitely love it in terms of the uh, combat mechanics. Love it in terms of the traversal mechanics. Uh, the world feels very vibrant. There's a lot of details going on in the background here. The uh, I love that the jumps are not necessarily difficult as much as uh, just, uh, you know, occasionally a little bit tricky. There's a lot of little hidden secrets, but they don't require intense amounts of precision. And honestly, if you ever have an issue with any precision jumps, just uh, get any flying unit and they can just kind of hover you in place for a minute. It feels very good. Like, it feels very, very, very good. So, I love that. Also, there's kind of an evolution mechanic. Uh, so, let's see. I'm pretty sure you're the one that evolves off this. Like, I just got this a little bit ago. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, yeah. Uh, someone was asking me earlier if I had this uh, this guy's name wrong. No. I didn't stutter. This is Butterfry, <laughs> the burning the burning moth. Um, oh yeah, there's also, if, if you like Legend of Mana, there's also a feeding mechanic, uh, wherein all of their stats are also changed based off the last three meals that you gave them. So that's fun too. Ooh. Okay, burn stacks, that's fun. Ooh. Yeah, I think, you know what, I think I might actually have to slot this guy back into the team. Seems like a pretty solid respect for this guy. Uh, let's see. Why can't I access his 10 plus yet? Didn't learn the prerequisite skills, but, but I did, I thought. I guess I needed that one to move on. Okay. Anyway, yes, big explodey butterfly with big crit chance. What's this? Cleansing burn. When an ally applies burn on an enemy or when an enemy takes burn damage, 75% chance to remove a buff. Ooh. I like it. And so, like, this is just kind of how it goes. You just start looking down the list of, like, oh, wait, you know, this isn't going to do much. This isn't gonna... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Here's this other thing over here. Oh, wait, this can be... Oh, and, like, you just keep noticing all these little, uh, like, little fun synergies uh, with all of these things. Um, but, yeah. Feels very, very good. I'll say that much. Uh, it's felt very nice. To, uh, to go through this whole thing. Now, I want to point out, even in terms of customizations and things like that, obviously you can you can custom build every one of your units. Uh, you've got uh, individual equipment uh, inventories for every one of your units and all of that. But on top of all of those things, you also have, uh, if you want to customize your, uh, your person here, uh, you can actually go through and uh, swap them out for any of the other characters as well. I'm assuming these guys are bosses or something based off the silhouettes, but yeah. Uh, those are another thing. Like, for example, uh, on Total Accident, I uh, had my uh, my character start off as the lady character, which, uh, yeah, they were looking extra stylish there for a little bit. But you start off with this uh, cool feathery hat look. You can change that to whatever you'd like, whenever you'd like. Um, in terms of other customizations, uh, you got little shops all over this uh, stronghold area here. Again, just feels like a nice little uh, hub that you can go back to at any time. If you ever have any extra kind of uh, units here, like, for example, uh, right here, uh, they give you little thingies for donating certain units. So, like, right here, I already have one of these guys that's currently somewhere else. So, we'll do that. Uh, they gave some extra items for that. Uh, and, again, you just get, like, little uh, little items for this. Uh, Drew it out. Uh, I think I already have one of those. There we go. So, I'll put those in. I want to try that glow fly there. And what's funny is going back to those uh, Pokemon inspirations, I love that uh, there's even a little kind of mini mini uh, joke there uh, that you get little uh, little journals here uh, for your monster journal here, kind of explaining what each of these do. This is basically your uh, Pokedex kind of situation. And I love how the guy just runs up and is like, yeah, my uncle invented these books. <laughs> oh, it's just so freaking charming, you know? I love it. Oh, it's, it's just so nice. It's so, so nice. Um, and yeah, they even give you a little, like, loot table for every one of these. Um, but yeah, it has felt good. Uh, so yeah, there, I'm sure there's a lot of types that aren't on there. And so, a lot of the, at least this portion of the game so far, has involved kind of tracking down and fighting boss units. Some of which have unique properties, like, for example, one of them that I was going and fighting involved a, uh, it involved fighting a guy, basically like this rainbow bird thing that just kept changing its uh, affinities every single time. 
So, like, every single round, you'd hit it with something, and it would swap out for something else. Which, again, you know, that was a fun little, uh, like, Pokemon mechanic there for that, too. Oh, and I love this music. Like, it... This music just does for me. So, this is the sort of, like, uh, trainer fight music, and, uh, yeah, it's... It's good. It's really good. So uh, this is uh, what I was mentioning earlier about uh, about having um, uh, certain fights where, for example, your uh, rules are a little bit different. So like right here, because we're fighting a person, uh, we got to be fair. And since we get the initiative in this fight, we only get two actions. So we make the most out of our two actions. But then we're all right back to normal rules next time. However, if this fight goes on for long enough... Everyone starts stacking a, uh, a buff called Infinity, uh, wherein uh, they start getting 25% bonus effect to everything that they do every round. Which is just a really fun surprise, um, because it basically just translates into, uh, into everybody just suddenly wrecking each other in one gigantic dramatic last stand. It, it's nice, it, just, it feels so good. Um, but yeah, I... When I was hearing folks tell me that this was awesome, I didn't expect it to, you know, have this much stuff going on. Um, it legitimately, to like, when people were telling me about it, it just sounded like, oh, you know, you get to, you basically just do the Metroid thing with your, you know, with the, a few little Pokemon things. And, you know, that's kind of fun. Nobody told me it was just a, you know, circus of buffs and debuffs. This is awesome. I love this kind of stuff. Like right here, the, this, like, chunky dude on my team right here. He's stacked for uh, for for health. Why is he stacked for health? Because uh, him having high health boosts the rest of the team. Uh, because uh, every time that uh, that he heals, he's or rather every time that he exists, he's got a passive that gives a percentage of his health to the rest of the team. But so you might be thinking, based off the previous perk trees and stuff, like you know maybe you would always want to use your strongest moves here, right? Well, take a look at this. Uh, with every move having a kind of a different property to it, the actual difference between these moves is something like maybe one hit and 5% of damage, right? So like, for example, Ice uh, ice Hail 1 is 3 times 60%, whereas 4 times 55 is uh, Ice Hail 2. But the thing is, your actual uh, kind of mana burn for this whole thing is nearly twice as much. So in a lot of cases, you're actually uh, kind of making that choice uh, in the middle of the fight, uh, whether or not, like, instead of like the, the whole Pokemon PP system in this one, it's the, uh, the mana system here. Wherein, in a lot of cases, you might potentially just take a basic attack, or, uh, or maybe even uh, just take a uh, like a weaker, uh, a weaker uh, spell type attack, in order to kind of save up for a bigger move down the road. So, like he has ice spears that he doesn't use very often, that are there as uh, kind of a uh, kind of very specific niche for the team in case they need to have water coverage. Whereas, for example, for the most part, he's there to uh, uh, to set up for others, uh, just kind of sustaining everybody through healthier. Uh, whereas if we wanted to go for a far more kind of defensive setup, like right here you see that he's also taken hits for others. Um, whereas if we want to go for a far more defensive setup, at any point we can swap out one of these three for a Dew, the robot guy. So we can stack both regen as well as... Uh, uh, as well as uh, overshields, but then at the same time, if we just needed to kind of go for a stall strategy, if we were looking to uh, maybe save some of our hitting power for later, and we just wanted to stall out the fight until Infinity starts triggering, then potentially we might want to go for you know something along the lines of uh, of putting in our uh, our jelly over there in order to give everybody a big heal. Whereas in this case, we can just have our chunky guy heal everybody because his healing scales off his own health, which is just. Ah, oh, every part of this setup feels so good. Every mechanic is just intertwining with another mechanic. Everything is very upfront about what it scales with. There's a lot of just fun min-maxing you can do. I, I, I love it. I really, really love it. And I know people have been telling me to get on this for years now. I've been telling me that it's really darn fun to play around with. And again, it's just been on the list. I'm sorry. It, it's awesome. This game kicks ass, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long to get to it. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely adoring this uh, this game so far. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely planning to uh, to cover it more as uh, you know as time goes on here. And uh, and yeah, if you if you've missed missed out on this one as well, uh, bear in mind that it is currently on sale. Uh, so. Uh, just, uh, you know, it might, might be like six bucks on the Switch. I'm just I'm just saying it's uh, cheap as hell, so uh, th there's that. Um, but yeah, 
though I will say, uh, you know, all versions of it are going to be awesome. Though I will say, personally, my experience on uh, playing on the wide Game Boy has been that this is, so far, of all of the games that I've played on the thing, has been the least drainy thing I've seen on it. Because average experience, even playing something like Tactics Ogre, is like four hours on that Switch, and I think it could easily go eight. Uh, again, you know, weird selling point, but I'm just kind of throwing that out there. If you're looking for something to play on a long trip, then there's that. Also, that probably wasn't the most effective move to make, but whatever, I want to explode these guys again. So there we go, it is done pausing. Man, these, uh, these random pauses on this computer aren't uh, concerning whatsoever. Ah, but yeah, finding these fun synergies between these different teams is so good. It feels so nice. Like right now, what I'm going for is just using the big guy to maintain as long as possible. Uh, then essentially swap, probably swapping him out for a Dew in just a sec to start uh, swapping over to Overshields. Uh, the bird, on the other hand, actually, yeah, let's, when do we... If he can survive one more round... Uh, but he might be able to exploit this, actually. Um, yeah, it's got... Bleed stacks are good. Uh, basically, the, the more you do, you can kind of uh, get some pretty ridiculous damage going. Um... Actually, no. Let's go ahead and swap him out for the shield guy, because that will immediately give us uh, more shields. There we go. See, like, if, if we ever need an emergency swap in, this guy comes in and just gives everybody shields. Dang it, computer, why are you pausing again? Stop doing that. All right, and we're back after rocking out to the music for a little bit here. I really wish you would stop doing that, but hey, you know what? That's not the game's fault. That is entirely my computer. There is a reason that I keep talking about uh, finally letting this, uh, this old thing retire. Okay. So, now we explodify these guys, get one more team member out of the way. And I love how even finishing off units has a certain strategic element to it. Because, for example, if you can set up a case where somebody gets knocked out at the end of your round, you can more or less uh, guarantee that uh, they will have one less action for next round, rather than trying to finish them off right now, because if, like, for example, we were to finish somebody off at the moment, then potentially uh, we might see a case where they would get a third guy in and they're coming in fresh and they might have a big AoE that they can follow up with. Uh, whereas, for example, you know, if we're doing something like this, it might be a little bit different. You might notice also the whole uh, physical special split is in full effect here, uh, with some things being uh, weak to physical, some things being weak to magic. Um, and I love how there's, uh, there's kind of a score system. If you look at the different units there, you might notice those little ratings. Um, between their, like, attack, defense, uh, all of that kind of thing. And it, while it does tell you exactly what those values give you, it's cool that it has a kind of clearly on display, like, preference for how stacked they are for a particular thing, right? Um, not to mention if at any point you forget what a debuff does, you simply hit the, hit a button and right here and it'll just, It'll just tell you what's going on, like, they're getting, for example, less mana cost by doing this, or, you know, they're dodging because of this, or, for example, actually, this was one of those little subtle changes uh, from the Pokemon formula that I really, really like, where instead of paralysis, wasting turns, and therefore kind of seeming like a delay, um, when somebody is shocked, uh, basically they get an additional 50% uh, attack for one of the hits hitting them, uh, if, uh, if that shocked unit is hit. Anyway. It's kind of throwing that out there as a bit of a thing. There's just mechanics on mechanics on mechanics, and I do love me some mechanics porn. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, man, that crit build is fun times, I will say. Like, right here, I don't even care that this attack isn't super effective against uh, most of them, but that's a good way to finish it off. And there we go. What do we get for doing that? Let's see, have other teams prepared? Nito, we get a skill potion, which apparently gives you a skill point or something. I don't know. Uh, Keeper Seeker. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, does he have another one? He does have another one, okay, because I forgot I got a promotion last time. Because you also get promoted as, uh, as you go on. And supposedly, oh, by the way, if you, uh, if you ever have a team comp that you particularly like, you can actually, uh, save them and name them and, uh, you know. It's just good times. Uh, there we, wait, what? There we go. Ah, uh, so, yeah. That's my first impressions on the thing. I know it's a bit of a long first impressions, but like, yeah, if uh, if you got a minute, you got a few bucks to spare, 100% this thing is awesome. It's like ev everything that I like about uh, 
about something like Symphony of the Night or something like any of the Metroid games is just like combining it with a lot of the best parts of the Pokemon franchise before it got extra complicated. Um, it's, oh, it feels so good. I say before it got extra complicated. Now that I think about it and in many ways, this is way more complicated, but it doesn't feel complicated. Like it feels very intuitive so far. Uh, but yeah, definitely love it. Also, interestingly enough, at any point, to, if you liked, uh, for example, something like uh, uh, the whole Fantasy Star system of turning around and talking to your party members, you can talk to your bird or whatever other starter you started with in order to get an idea for what's going on there. Now, I don't know what the other starters do, but I do know that I'm very happy about picking my hover bird here. Yes, technically the other bird right at the very start can do this too, but this is never not going to be fun, and also this bird explodes things with crits, which I really love. All right. Anyway, y'all have a good one, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.